Hey, everyone. Uh, we just want to make a quick disclaimer here. We're going to talk about different bands on our show. We're not interested in really hashing out whether they're punk, emo, pop punk, post-industrial bluegrass. We don't claim to be the authority on anything that we talk about. We just want to talk about the memories we had with the music we grew up with. We respect everyone's right to like what they like, and we know that every band is somebody's favorite band. That being said, we want you to approach each episode with an open mind. We're here to take a look back at the music we grew up with. Although we've grown old, we don't have to grow up. Welcome to the Pod Punk Show. So, uh, I really wanted to get a, like a punk episode in. So this is going to be an Aaron episode or one of my bands that I picked this okay. week. All right, cool. And this week, our band that we're doing, uh, hails from New Jersey. They're kind of legends like under themselves. So they've been around so long. Yeah. They've been around for a really long time. Uh, they started in 1989, the year I was born. Yeah. They started like before Green Day. Yeah. Cause Green Day started like 90. Yeah. It's probably like right around. I mean, we don't know the exact date, but it's right around the same time. Cause Dookie was what? 93, 94. Yeah, there was and like there was the only peak a couple, wave. Yeah, and there was only a couple of CDs before Dookie. So they, they actually might be the same year. Oh, totally. They, the yeah, yeah, year me and uh, our Lord and Savior Taylor Swift were born, 1989, is when they started. <laughs> and so this week we are talking about The Bouncing Soul. <laughs> to be fair, like your mom jokes like got really hacky in like like 2001 to 2003. Yeah. This song is from 1994. So like they were the first ones to like be like, I want to fuck your mom. No, they're pioneers in that aspect. <laughs> that was territory that we didn't even know we could touch. You know how you know how expensive it was back then to record music? Like we didn't you couldn't do it with an iPhone. Like you actually had to like to have that quality of a song. Yeah. That's that's dedication to, that is- to the craft. <laughs> That's a really expensive, like your mom joke that you have to give them the, the respect. It's like two that. grand of studio time. And so what's, what's like track three or whatever track this is. They're like, uh, it's called, I like your mom. All right. Let's, let's hit it then <laughs> from the top. It's your guy's money, not mine. So <laughs> let's kind of go like into like the early stuff of them. Okay, um, cool. So like you said, these guys are, they're like really legendary when it comes to like punk rock. No, absolutely. They've been around forever. They've always kind of been like, because being out of New Jersey too, they almost have kind of like a, like a, I have like a Springsteen thing in my head of them. Like they're just like the like blue collar punk. That's a really good analogy. Like they were never super famous. They were never like the big dogs, but like they've always just been going at it and been consistent and like hardworking punk band. Yeah. They're like the Clydesdale of punk rock. Like yeah. just a big workhorse. And even like some of their, I noticed with their melodies, some of it, it's not a rip off of Springsteen, but it's definitely, I grew up in that like era of New Jersey. It's got a lot of homage a little bit to Bruce. Springsteen. It does have style. a very Jersey feel. Yeah, it does. It's very unique to it. So it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, these are, these are the OGs, I guess is what we would say. So, and uh, just to cover some quick history, they're like band member wise they are not a typical punk band except for the drummer they've been the same band since 1989 to today just so people know that is almost unheard of when you're dealing with like any type of band that's been around for 20 there's plenty of punk bands where there's no original members left no no, that's always awesome too it's usually like the the singer came in after the second album and then he has such an ego he kicks everybody else out eventually right yeah or like just the atrophy over time but like no they uh they've changed drummers twice in 27 years but it does it kind of fits that that image of like where Working class. It's almost like Bon Jovi singing about Tommy and Gina. Like they're just there to like do it and grind it out. And like, that's like what they do. So it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Let's cover some of their, their first couple. Hang on. We're professionals. We have paper. We do have paper. I killed a tree for this episode, everybody. That's how you have to do it. I made this paper myself. I sharpened my ax. I went into the forest. I pointed to this one. I'm like, you shall be show notes. And this show has been brought to you by Aaron's paper department at work. <laughs> they don't even know their sponsor. So their first album, 1994, their first two releases were self-released. They put them on their self, no record label, like super DIY, do it yourself. And that opening song we played a little bit of there, I Like Your Mom, that's off their first one called The uh, the Good, The Bad, and The Argyle. Okay. So they got the tongue-in-cheek uh, title name, too. That album was basically put together from like their early EPs into like a full length, and Argyle was the name of one of their EPs. Right. And so like that's always been like, kind of a punk tradition is to kind of have like the goofy songs. It's almost like the class clown now is doing music is kind of what it is. But they, they have almost a little bit more of a serious take 
on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like when you hear Blink doing it, it's definitely just like it's a goofy song. Like they're they're taking it the same way a band would write like a real type of song. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oh, totally. Well, there's there's this big kind of this deep vein in the in kind of the lifeblood of punk uh, punk rock, which is it's very juvenile. Yeah. Like punk rock is very much a, it's a we don't it, take ourselves way yeah. too serious. You say immature, the world is like no, everything's everything is dumb. Yeah. So why do we have to be so serious about how dumb the world is? No, it's a cool and it's a really good defense mechanism too, because like it basically takes everything away. Like you, there's no way to attack anything like that because I don't care, man. I'm just doing it. Right, like the whole like anarchy thing in punk. A lot of it is just like, well, the system's dumb. Yeah. So yeah. like, let's talk about your mom. So it's always the fighting the system type of aspect of it. Yeah. It's, it, it's cool. the being silly in face of when you're supposed to be serious. Like they don't like on a lot of the early stuff, there's not really anything that's like super serious and super like dramatic. Yeah. So their second album, uh, maniacal laughter came out in 1995 a year later. That's a, that's another self-released album. Self-released. And this one's like maniacal laughter almost was one of the ones we were, we were going to talk about today. Cause it's a very solid album. This is the first, so I'll play just a quick snippet of the first uh, bouncing soul song. I ever heard. Cool. I had money to buy a new BMX. Like it's very like just like dun, 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 like no, it's like every, everybody's thought in fifth grade. But it's all it's it's literally just like I'm gonna buy a BMX bike. It's kind of the whole that's theme it of the song. They they explore some really weird song concepts. They also have on this album uh, "Born to Lose," that's which is uh, this one's a lot, this one is like kind of it has more of a like depth to it. Well, like when I heard that title too, this comes back to the Bruce Springsteen because "Born to Run" is like his favorite. Yeah, no, totally. Like you know, so like it's definitely an homage to that. Well, and "Born to Lose" itself is kind of a very like punk rock idea of like this system is set up to be against me, so I fuck this yeah. system. Well, it, like I'm saying, it's almost the, the Bruce Springsteen style of like it's like you know I was born to run. It's the punk version version of like well, no matter what like we're fuck ups so it's it's a cool way to look at it oh totally um and then uh here we go i was also on that album is another good one so those first two they're very like maniacal after is very solid the good the bad and the argyle is kind of uh if you're really into the bouncing souls of course you've heard it and like if you want to get more into them it's a good place to go but it's not something i would consider like mandatory to their catalog now at this point like with these releases are they gaining any fan base or attention or is it oh, really yeah. self concealed to the scene that they're in i'd say the first one at that time they were much more in their scene but maniacal after got them a lot of attention okay. and but like yeah maniacal after they were also this is the album that got them the attention of epitaph which is a legendary punk label i told you bronx uh sorry everybody bronx broke into the room somehow past the gate bronx so. is our podcast french bulldog he's fucking cute but he's a dick yeah he's he's defiant john's gonna go put him away so i'm gonna vamp while he does that i don't need i didn't even see like i just saw him in here i didn't hear him move the gate or anything it's like a fucking ninja. So yeah, Maniacal Laughter, that second album, it's really solid. There's a lot of good songs on it. It's, it's one that I think is, it's a good listen, especially if you like kind of like uh, straight down the line, very like punk rock, punk rock. Okay. So it's got like the punk beat and it's just very, very fast paced. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's again, it's very juvenile. It's very fun. And that album actually is what got them the attention of Epitaph Records. Okay, cool. That's a big record label too for that. Absolutely. Know. For yeah. the, uh, for the uninitiated Epitaph Records was started originally by, uh, records of Bad Religion just to put out Bad Religion albums. It, they started signing some other bands and in the early nineties, one of the bands he signed was Offspring. Yep. Little known, little known band. Yeah. Little, oh yeah, them guys. Yep. And their first album, uh, Smash basically broke every pop possible record a record could break for sales yeah it's pretty incredible for an independent label to do this like it's literally just like that's always fun to see and that's kind of like the independent model is you put out your own stuff do it your own way and one of your bands becomes mega successful out of nowhere and then next thing you know the rest is history so that's kind of an epitaph is like they're a big mover and shaker in the punk like record label yep. world and even now they're still huge they've they've started picking up a lot of bands they've given a lot of bands that had their shot a second chance like kind of like you know to rebuild up their their fan base oh yeah and they, they've They've kind of diversified. They're not just straight punk anymore. Yeah. They have a lot more like uh, like hardcore and metal on there. Yeah. So like when you're dealing with independent labels, I would consider Epitaph like one of the five like main like we don't have what we're doing without. They're one of the major indie labels, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Big, big stuff. So uh, Bouncing Souls third album called just like self-titled The Bouncing Souls came out in 1997 on Epitaph. Mm -hmm. That's always interesting when a band does that. Yeah. When the, it's like the like the. Uh, it's like their first album for public consumption in yeah, a way. Yeah, it's like I almost consider it's like now they're baptized and like they're ready to start. Oh, yeah. Like it's like a refresh and they're just saying like, this is us. Like we actually know who we are now. <laughs> So from this point forward, take us serious. No, absolutely. But that album, uh, so the Bouncing Souls self-titled from 1997 is very much, uh, was very heavily panned. Okay, cool. 
Uh, it didn't get, and there was also even like in interviews and stuff talking back about that. Album, a lot of people in the band themselves have said like that was rushed. It was a lot of like kind of recycling old songs off EPs and from early stuff, and uh, they weren't happy with it. So that one didn't get a lot of attention. That was 1997, and that's going to lead us right up into uh, the two albums we're going to talk about most today is going to be uh, Hopeless Romantic, their fourth album. Right, that's 1999. Yep, and okay. then uh, How I Spent My Summer Vacation. That's the follow up. 2001. Yes. But I mean, that's pretty cool. So we're going to basically focus in on those two. And those are two pretty pivotal albums in their career and basically the history of punk rock. And these guys are, I just want to get this in. These guys are a four piece. Four piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Just like kind of your standard two guitars, bass, drum. I should actually Google that. I don't know if they both play guitar. Yeah, I was going to say, no, they're, they're a four-piece, and it's a singer, guitarist, bassist, drummer. Right, which is, I always think of this in a weird way, because they're not a trio, like Alkaline Trio, Power Trio, Blink-182, Power Trio. Mm-hmm. Everyone is playing an instrument and singing. Yep. They, to me, are a trio, but they're not a power trio, because they have three people playing instruments. Like, yeah. instrument-wise, it's a trio. Yeah, and that they're playing it like trio style. I know exactly what you mean. It's um, it's a weird spot. Like, you almost, if you're going to add in that fourth guy, you almost want him to double up the guitars, because live, it's going to make it sound a lot better. Right. Or it gives, like, the other guitarists, like, freedom to kind of go off. Although, I do think when someone is uh, in a band and they're singing and they're not playing guitar, I feel it's easier to put on a more uh, entertaining live show. No, absolutely. I completely agree with that as well. And you also kind of notice that when just one guy is just singing, yep. he, he's a usually a little bit more consistent singing live. Yeah, it does definitely helps out. He only has to worry about hitting his notes and then making sure right. the audience is happy. No, it's a, it's a cool thing, but yeah, we just wanted to make note there. They're basically a three piece, but they extended it out to a four piece. All right. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, it would help us out a lot if you could rate, review, and subscribe in iTunes or however else you get your podcasting fix. Or better yet, just tell somebody you know via word of mouth. It goes a lot farther than you think. Hey, everybody. If you want to get in contact with us here at the show, you can find us on Twitter at Podpunk Show. Our email address is podpunkshow at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Back to the show. You're so rad. 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 Again, a very like silly song. It was really silly. We played uh, the BMX song going out to break there, and then we came back on You're So Rad, which is off Hopeless Romantic, and it's ve- like it's a very silly song again. Yeah. And I don't know why, but it makes me think of Wayne's World every time I hear it. No, that's a really good like analogy for it. It's got definitely like a Wayne's World kind of feel. It's just like, it's kind of goofball, just fun energy is kind of like what the vibe is. Well, it's also that opening bass line to it reminds me of uh, like one of the songs that uh, Cassandra from Wayne's World's band would play, like that, that, that thumping <laughs> bass line bringing yeah. it in. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Like, it's a good fix. Um, so, Hopeless Romantic. Yes. This is 1999. 1999. Uh, the year Willennium by Will Smith came out. It is. It's a good year. <laughs> so what was your first kind of impressions of, because like, uh, like, give me your backstory. Like, what did you know about the Bouncing Souls? And then what did you think having to like really dive in? Okay, cool. I didn't know much about them. They're not a band that I ever, you know, looked into or was like a huge fan of. But like, I know like who they are and like, I know they've been around forever and that they're an important like, you know, band in the scene. Um, my first memory though is I went to the Warp Tour. And uh, the opening band was the first major concert I'd ever gone to. The opening band was Jimmy Eat World. And they came out. And it was before Jimmy Eat World was like super, super, you know, big. It was after Clarity, but it was right before Bleed American was going to come out and like blow them up radio wise. And Jimmy Eat World Live is very boring. They just play, they sound, it's almost like turning on like the song and then watching the song play itself. Okay. And then the following band right after that was the Bouncing Souls. And I specifically remember them because it was freaking fun. Like they came out, the singer was jumping around. He's in the audience, he's not in the audience. It was just, it was a lot of fun going through. I don't remember really any of their songs from that set but that set does stick out in my mind of like who is this band the bouncing souls type of thing yeah and so that was my first like real memory of them so like they know how to fucking put on a show yeah it was fun it was like a party like basically is how i felt they were on the main stage too like it wasn't like one of the smaller stages like and it was it was early it was like you know warp tour starts at like 11 a.m yeah they mix up the bands every show so like jimmy world was like the 11 a.m and then bouncing souls was like the 11 20 a.m so you came right out like right afterwards oh wow um what year would that been this has got to be like 2003 2004 Okay. Yeah, I don't know the exact exact year, but it's definitely like early 2000s. So, 
That's a good time. That's yeah. A, that's a good time in music in general. Really good time in music. A lot of things are happening. A lot of things are about to happen. So good. what did you kind of think of this album, Hopeless Romantic, kind of listening to it end through end, like how uh, to feel? I mean, I went through a lot. Like it's it's tough because um, I'm not a huge fan of punk rock. It's very elementary. Okay. Yeah. It's stripped down pop music. Yeah. But I'm also like not a uh, music douchebag, but it's just tough because like I just like their songs are really happy. And like for me, I'm kind of like <laughs> really negative. Yeah. So like it's almost like I'm like, what are they trying to do? Like what what are they trying to do to me? Like what they're like letting down my guards. Like I just get like <laughs> it's so bad that like I just got like, really uncomfortable. And like I'm trying to figure out like what's wrong with him? Like why is he like everything's just so happy? And then like you're like they just like they'll just pick a topic to write a song about. So like one song could just be like how somebody needs two nickels to like buy bubble gum. Yeah. And like that's the song. So like you kind of just have to take that. I'm not used to that. So I it was tough. You they're know, almost not angsty enough for you. Yeah. Yeah, like you have to have conviction. It's almost like, uh, and I don't want to use like Hamilton, but it's like you, you if, if you don't have like a point of view, like and you don't believe in something, you believe in nothing. Like that's kind of like how I kind of fell with it. But that being said, I can see why like they were what they were. Right. It's a great live show. Right. And there's very much a, like a punk band. Like it's all four, four time. It's yeah. all like, it's all like straight out the gates. Yeah. Four chords. Then that's the verse is also the chorus. We're just going to palm eat the verse. We're going to strum the chorus. Like, yeah. So, so like a couple of the, uh, specific kind of like not hit songs. Cause obviously it's a punk band. There's no such thing as a hit song. Right. That's what makes you a pop punk band. Right. That's the difference between <laughs> success. Not, not that they're not successful, but I do a joke in my stand up, which is, it's basically like I played bass in an unsuccessful punk band, which is all of them. <laughs> I mean, that's the you know. definition. There's no such thing. As After shows, did we make any that. money? Guess we're still punk. Yeah, that's an oxymoron <laughs> otherwise. What about uh, the song Olay? Olay, that was cool. Uh, one of my notes was like... Because that one's literally about nothing. Well, yeah, that, the song was like, oh, okay, like it's their catchiest song I thought off olay, the album. Olay, 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 olay. So now, when I started actually like researching them, and I saw they came out of the New Brunswick area, which is Rutgers. Right. Okay. I'm from Florida. Gainesville, which is the University of Florida, is like a very, very important scene to music. And a lot of bands come out of that. And the reason why it's able to develop that type of scene is because you have a lot of young kids at a party school constantly going and you have a lot of parties in houses. And I can, this band is a house party band. I can see oh, these totally. guys setting up shop in anybody's New Brunswick house. Um, there's going to be a keg. Everyone's got, you know, red cups and they're going to be singing these songs and they're playing in the corner of the living room and everyone's just going to have a fucking fun time and jumping around and i can see like where these songs come out of that oh totally now does that translate to something john bryan would like and listen to no <laughs> well no it's like it's like a local thing but like i could see like where like they came out of like you know building into that scene and at the time you know if it was 1999 i was old enough to listen to that and appreciate it i could see like why it would be great fair enough like i can't begrudge you on that this yeah. is actually one i picked this as my like first like punk punk band yeah intentionally yeah because I know it's so not in the vein of things you listen to normally. Oh man, like he took me way out of my comfort zone. But it was cool though. I was like, it was, it was really fun. Like I, I ended up taking from it more so, less so about the music, but more so about their history and like what they were and like what what was represented from them at the time. So sure, it was really good stuff. The other thing I took from them too is um, they're very B fifty two ish when it comes to like their lyric <laughs> style. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's kind of like it's like out there music. It does have more structure than the B fifty twos, but he's got like the very much where it's just like weird ranty chanty lyrics that kind of don't match like well what's he going on. he actually that's something i had in my notes too is he has a to me like a very like classical punk sounding voice where yeah. everything sounds like he's shouting yeah yeah um tin roof rusted like yeah yeah like the, that's where i kind of got the b52 vibe and from. like because they're a very like inspiring band to like they set off a lot of like that sound you can kind of hear, hear yeah. filtered down to the ages sure sure Hopeless Romantic is, it's an album that I liked a lot, but I hadn't like sit down to like really be critical of it. Yeah. So like, that was kind of like my question is like, how did you get into Bouncing Souls? Cause you said like, they're like one of your, like your main, main bands that you love. No, no, no. I, I like them a lot. <laughs> okay. But I wouldn't even probably put them in my like, top, top 10 punk bands. Oh, okay. Okay. That changes everything. Then. But they're, they're like, I like them a lot. And I also, I feel like they're a good one. It's more, I wanted to see your reaction to it than anything. That's fair. I said, this is like Yellow Card again, where I went into the entire time thinking you liked Yellow Card and then it changes. No, you'll never know where I'm coming from. I don't. There's you're only like, one band you know I like. You're like an enigma. <laughs> every, every time I think I know you, you're like, nah, man, come on, dude. My name's not Aaron. My name's Paul and I have a rap record. I'm here hiding. I'm on the lamb. That's not my wife. <laughs> no, no. I don't, I don't. <laughs> nah, see, say, no. Nah, see? <laughs> you'll never know where I'm coming from, never say. Know where I'm coming from, say. So let's go to the second album we wanted to hit on a lot. Yep. Uh, How I Spent My Summer Vacation. Yes. 
Now, in my opinion, because Hopeless Romantic, I thought was a very strong album, and kind of they had a more developed sound that was more unique instead yeah. of just straight punk. It's more polished, and their voice is definitely clear on it. You can hear that filtered in all the rest of their albums of like what makes them the bouncing souls and the way they structure a song. How I Spent My Summer Vacation is very much kind of the finalizing and locking that in, like Private Radio. Probably one of my favorite up there bouncing soul songs. Their bassist, by the way, is he's amazing. He's he's in my opinion their like their most talented musician. A big thing I love about punk rock is that it is a genre where bass can shine. Yeah, it's like almost like the lack of lead guitarist vision and structure is you know taken over by the bassists. Well, because when you're just playing four chords, there's so much room to move around and yeah. and you can uh, smooth out transitions a lot on bass that yeah. way. I think that's what we were kind of talking about before with the amount of members in the band. When you only have one guitarist live, that guy's got to play his guitar parts. Right. He's You don't have a second guitarist that can play the rhythm and then you can have a lead over that. So the bassist in punk kind of steps up and kind of like gets to ride, you know, the notes that they're playing out. Absolutely. They get to be the one to introduce the movement. Yeah, yeah. They kind of do. They get to do, it's almost like the jazz portion where they're still playing in the right key, but they get to swing in and out of like actually what's going on. Did you have any specific notes or any uh, specific thoughts to how I spent my summer vacation? Not, not really. I mean, it, to me, it was, um, it was very similar to the um, Hopeless Romantic. That being said, True Believers is their best song, in my opinion, on it. Uh, True Believers, when I actually heard this song, it actually did kind of put like the memory back in my head of the song to what I was seeing at the Warp Tour. So I didn't remember it at the time, but like when I was uh, starting to like think about him in my head, I kind of can like build these memories of him right up on the barrier with the crowd. Because that was the other thing too that stood out for me is um, he doesn't like to just sing on stage and kind of just be a front man. He likes to climb down, especially at festival size, you know, events. He likes to climb down and get into the audience, which also kind of backed up my feeling with like they're kind of like a house party band. Oh, exactly. That's you know? exactly what I was going like to add on to that. Yeah, they're like the, the almost like, and that builds off of what you were saying with like they're like the blue collar band. They're like the union of the people like they're they're the people's totally, voice totally. type of shit so like that's really cool like, they're a party band it. Like, yeah, they're it's, a party it's band. A part, that's why a lot of their songs, like, you're not going to get a, like, hardcore political bouncing soul song. Yeah, no, it's actually, now you kind of put it like that with a party band. It's like, they're, it's not that they're vanilla, but they're very middle. They're more about the good time than they are about the message. Yes, yeah. And I think for me, that's a little weird. When and because you, you're, you're, uh, you're born into, like, message bands. You like bands yeah. that kind of have a more mystique to them. Yeah, I like bands with an opinion. And even I, I like bands that hate them because of their opinion. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of <laughs> like... You know, it's the other aspect of it. They're definitely not that type of band. No, it's like just mosh, have fun, yeah. talk about your mom. It's not a bad thing. Definitely not a bad thing. I can see like the background of why, you know, that's cool. No, absolutely. Like, and that's kind of, kind of where I come from too, is like, I always have this thing with the bouncing souls of, I won't hear them for a long time. And then they'll come up in like a, a playlist or like they'll pop into my head one day and I'll, I'll throw on a song. And every time I'm like, oh my God, I should listen to them more. <laughs> like, I'm always like, there's so much fun. I should listen to them more. Yeah. And then they kind of fade back out. Like again, like it'll, I'll go through, I'll hit my hits. I'll hit like uh Monday morning amp brigade. I'll hit like the ones I remember, like That's BMX funny, song. Man. And then I'll be like, okay, but I, I've never like gone through and like deep dived on like their discography or like right. listen to all their albums. It's so funny. You say that too, because when I first started listening to them this week, um, I was coming off it like very defensive just because I, I, I didn't like it. But right before you were coming over, I was kind of tidying up the apartment and I had the headphones on the wireless and I was cleaning and I had them going and I started getting into it. And it was almost like once I took my attention away from like listening to them for like the music. When you weren't looking through them at like the eyes of a critic. Yeah. And I was just kind of like hear it and like I'm doing something and it was physical activity and it was like giving me like an upward boost. Yeah. It kind of rebuilds on like that whole thing of like how they're just like a good time. Like, you know, you almost like, I don't want to use this as a, like how you hire a clown for a kid's party. <laughs> like, I don't mean it as mean as that, but like, they're almost like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're the act you, you bring in to like, you know, it's like a, when you open up a show, you need an open MC to come out and warm up the crowd. Right. Right. Bouncing souls. They're, they're like high energy, good time yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so I know one thing you had mentioned to me that you really didn't like about them was uh, the simplicity of their lyrics. Yeah. And like, I'm not, again, like I'm not just trying to be here and like be like a Simon Cowell type of figure, but like I'm opinionated. Oh, you're totally the Simon Cowell of the two but of no, us. I mean like, like I just like, they're so simple, man. They're so <laughs> simple. <laughs> it's like, like there's like, it's almost like I, I just get annoyed <laughs> like when I'm listening to it. Cause I, like I've mentioned that I have a thing against like thrash and hardcore. Like I had a prejudice. Do yeah. you have that with punk? Like the punk kids were those ones. the ones that Yeah. I mean, I don't think I do, but maybe I, I do. Like when we were, when I was in a band and like we were trying to get into it, there was like a definitely a clear local music scene and this music, maybe that's also part of it too. This music sounds exactly like the beginning local bands from like my town. Yeah. And it was also, it was kind of the same positive image. It was definitely ska influenced and like that was going on 
on at the time too. Right. But when you took away the horns and the upstrokes from the reggae, the basic breakdown was bouncing souls, punk rock style music. No, totally, totally. So, I get where well, you're coming from. That that makes any sense. So with, with you liking them, like what was like? What did you look to with liking them? Is it really just like the vibes that you were getting? Well, here's the thing. Them? I think it's a huge difference between those two. Uh, I don't listen to lyrics. Like I've only yeah. in the last couple of years of my life actually started paying attention to okay uh, what the words are said or what they mean. Okay. Like, uh, that's so weird to me because like out of the two of us, you're like the most human and like the lyrics are like the human part of the song. That's what I love about. No, music. I've always been, uh, I, I've, I've said this before and it wasn't it like it became a joke, but it's true. Yeah. I didn't realize that like Fall Out Boy's early albums were all about girls. <laughs> Because okay. I, I never paid a, a, a fuck bit of attention to what they were talking about. Yeah. I was just like, I like his voice and the melodies, and okay. I, I love the guitar parts. Okay, that makes sense. I, I've always been very pri- uh, primal with music, okay. like it's just the the energy of it and the spirit of it. Well, I mean, that's the other thing too. Is like I'm not like looking that that dissect like every band, and like their lyrics are important to me. But it's also too like it's melody and lyrics is kind of like what I'm getting at here. But again, like I, I don't like I don't bash them. Like I feel like we're like a little league right now. <laughs> like there's eight year olds playing, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, well, like it doesn't like. It doesn't seem fair. And like, I know that even that's an insult beyond an insult. And like, that's not what I'm trying to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what it's this show is like, supposed to they, be. Like, uh, you, you don't like them and they're not for you, but you almost feel bad because you're like, uh, like they're just so nice. Like they seem like the nicest guys well, that was in the, the world. other problem. Like I told you, like the more, <laughs> like when I first started listening to it, like I was like, oh my God, like I got mad at you. I was like, man, <laughs> fuck this guy. Like he's like, he's like seriously like punking me. Like he knows like what I'm going to do. And like, I almost like wanted to check and see if there was like a camera set up in my apartment so you could watch <laughs> me like get like fucking angry at myself that like I'm listening. And um, the more I got to know them and to listen to them, the more you like them. Right. And then the less you hate, just blind hate like their music because you think it's like too simple or it's too childish. Childish. Right. Well, punk rock is simple. Punk rock is basically no, stripped down everything from like pop music yeah. to its its core. But there's a weird thing like if the Ramones. Yeah. Beyond simple. They're great. Like Joey Ramone has such a cool voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, definitely with these two albums too. Like it is much more and some of their later stuff, like the lyrics get a little. Oh, deeper. their later stuff is great. So, like, I don't want to like sh- shit. Oh, so maybe I, I just had you like laser focus in on like a part of their career. That's yeah, not, like yeah, because really like for the, you. the minute we got into like their later stuff, like Lean on Me, Sheena. I, oh, I, beautiful song. I, like my notes here. Let's actually on. let's go to break and let's actually then yeah talk play about that. Let me stuff. find my notes on that because I have different notes on. All right, later we're gonna stuff. go on to break here. Let's play. Uh, let's play. Uh, Bully in the jukebox, and we'll be right back. Which is me, by the way. Apparently. <laughs> There was no fuss, we knew her game You look great, but all your songs are lame Bully in the jukebox, because it's fun You can't get near it, until we're done Bully in the jukebox, because we rule All the songs we like are But I want to push back a lot about what you're saying here about Bouncing Souls, okay? Thank you, because like I, I'm starting to feel like I'm just a fucking douche to be a douche. Well, I have too much of a trouble of like, yeah, everyone has their opinion, but I think you're wrong. On what? Okay, are the Bouncing Souls like a simple, fun party band? Yes, but they're not trying to be fucking, they're not like making concept albums or like painting themselves as like some progressive, like brand new sound. Right. They are like, we're going to have fun. Our songs are simple. Let's just fucking do it. Like, I don't understand what's wrong. Like, there's a place in the world for happy. Yeah, exactly. And like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's happy though. So like, that's my main thing is I also, I don't think they're a party band. I think to me, LMFAO is a party band. Andrew WK is a party band. Andrew Part- WK is amazing, by the way. He was uh, great. You ever seen him live? No, I've seen like videos. Oh my God. I saw him at the Warp Tour. And like, this was the other thing too. So this is what, this is the difference between a Bouncing Souls and an Andrew WK. Okay. Like you see Andrew WK setting up on the Warp Tour because people are judgmental. This is, a, this is a very clicky type of music. Okay. We're older now. We're out of it. But like, think about it. We are just as bad as the jocks were to like nerds. Oh this yeah. This is a whole infrastructure and type of th- th- this type of music. So when you're at the Warp Tour and you see the, the Andrew WK guys setting up, they're bringing out like Ibanez and Jackson brand guitars and like that it's not Marshall it's all like the heavy metal fucking amps and like it's all the old yeah. guys completely bald but they have a six inch tightly <laughs> trimmed like long like they goatee. all look like they're in fucking yeah. system of a down and like you're looking at them and you're like oh, fucking Christ like what the fuck is this gonna be <laughs> and then all of a sudden dun, 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 
motherfucker comes running out. He's wearing all white. It's bleach denim. He's fucking, you could smell him. You can't even smell him, but you can tell he fucking smells because his clothes have not been washed this entire warp tour. No. For the next 22 minutes, you are blown the fuck away. He ended, he had like an eight-year-old girl on his shoulders, like he's in Disney World for the first time with her. <laughs> and she's like doing like tricks he taught her with the mic. They're eating fruit. Like it was a fucking, it was a fantastic experience. All I'm saying with them is for me to listen to them and get to it, it's like arrested development. It never got past a garage band level point. I'm not trying to bash them. They don't care what I think. They shouldn't care what I think. No, totally. I don't care what you think, you but think I think a, you're wrong. Nobody listening to me should care what I think. Like, what do you mean by simple? Like, what? Like, what's missing? Like, what would they, what, like, what, is there a, a level of, a, like, difficulty that's not that's there? That's a great question. Hold on. I'm going to read you what's missing. I, I have some notes here. I actually, I took screenshots and, like, I was listening to one of their songs and I'm ranting in my head about, like, what I don't like about it. That's the thing, too, is, like, there's a podcast, so you got to get worked up. You know, like, this is real. Like, I really don't like this, but, like, you know, yeah. Well, that's why I, I like, after the break, I corrected yeah. myself. I'm like, you know what? Like someone should fuck push him. back here. It's about time somebody told that right. motherfucker. Hey, buddy. I live in New York, but I've been way too San Francisco on you. Yeah. So hold on. I took um, and you're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to pull up the song because you have uh, the music. Okay. So we have it in our. So I took some screenshots. Can you pull up um, "Say Die When You're Young" from the Ghosts of the Boardwalk album? Go, uh, Ghosts of the Boardwalk is the one that I don't like of the, all their albums. Okay. Well, I was actually pulling up the song because it was a song that I. It was an album that I tended to like more of the songs. <laughs> Of course it was. But um, the, uh, their, their mantra in this song is kind of them telling a person like me to go fuck myself. When you're young, write your songs. Take your time. Stay strong. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is a quiet part of a punk song. No, this is their entire mantra of how they write music. And it gave me respect for them. And it's, it, to me, it's showing their arrested development. They're like acknowledging it. And this is how we get a band writing a song about BMX bikes when they're 25. Yeah, but BMX bikes are still... I, if, I was, if I was thinner, I'd have one right now. And I would have the sweetest fucking pegs on my BMX bike. I'm saying Don't no. you get it wrong. I'm saying no. If you would have heard that in fifth grade and the person running for class president used that as like their song, like they would have cleaned up with the votes. Yeah, it would have been time. unanimous. What I'm saying is like that to me like is like their mantra is just like, you know, just stay strong, hold on, stay young, and hold on to like your heart, like basically. Yeah. So like, that was though when I, when I heard that, that was when I started to flip... This was like oh, an hour okay. before you came over. Yeah, because you did say that like like you like recently just turned a corner. Yeah, on them. and like literally was listening to that song where I was just like, that's when I just started to get it. I was like, you can't look at this from like number one. I you know I'm critiquing them. Like why? Yeah. Okay. But number two, like you can't look at it as the full picture. You have to. You can't. It's a McDonald's meal. You can't critique it like it's a New York Times write up about per se in New York City. Right. Which is a really expensive restaurant. It's Thank really you. Cool. I I assume from context, but I like I've never heard of it. Yeah, you should try it sometime. I have it every Friday. It's amazing. Um, you fucking elitist if, prick. If you go into, if you go, I'm, I live in this city, God damn it, and I enjoy this city, God damn Wait, it. Wait, is it a place you need a reservation? <laughs> it's a place you can't even pick the food they're going to give you. They just have a menu and you oh, pay four hundred dollars and they bring it out. I've never gone. Okay, right? <laughs> you've actually my, been. Yeah, like now I'm like starting to hate myself. No, because like it's the thing of like you have such a dry delivery. Like I eat there every Friday. I'm like, you know what? I could totally see that being just like one of your weird fucking things you yeah, do. Yeah, he goes in, he drops 400 <laughs> in per se alone, and like they, he tips well, so nobody, nobody stops him. They just let him do it. Yeah, it's not his, it's not anyone else's fault he looks like a weekend dad. All I have to say is if you have the option to upgrade to truffles, you, you spend the extra money. <laughs> Okay, because truffles are very rare. Wait, wait, wait. How is the aioli, though? Uh, the aioli is amazing. It's made table side, and it's all <laughs> organic and fresh. So it's incredible. And the thing with an aioli is the minute it actually gets the room temperature, it starts to decompose and break down. That's a lot a lot of people don't realize, because with the egg binder that's keeping it all together, the minute it gets past that point, <laughs> it's done. So like whenever you go to like McDonald's and they have like the new garlic aioli, uh -huh. that's mayo. Like, fuck them. They don't know what they're talking about. I don't they're even know what the fuck aioli is. I just know it tastes like flavored mayo. But all I'm saying, though, with this band, though, that was a point where, like, I started to realize. Sorry. That's <laughs> oh, fine, man. That's how I feel about it. That's like, that's a. You know me. I'm not a person that ever really says things are bad. Yeah. 
I usually just go, well, they're not for me. They're for someone else. Yeah. And this is when I, I knew it would be a challenge because it is very like, hey. It's, it's, yeah, it's like. like it's, we, it's bubblegum pop in the sense that like it, it's a very simple, pure yeah. flavor. That being said, though, I, I kind of respect it. Sometimes you have to take things in context of like. Exactly. Their place in time and history and also what came after them. But what they are to like what the scene was is so much more important because they're, they're just such a nice group of guys. They have a very positive outlook on everything. And it seems like they, their image that they're always trying to pres- for, you know, put out is, is a good image, which doesn't matter. I don't think that was really like a niche that needed to be filled. But it just, to me, it's just so cool that they could get such a hardcore support built around that. Right. You know what I mean? Like it was almost like, it's almost like when you see like a really bad cult movie mm-hmm. and there's a group of people that love it, like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I don't no, think that's, totally. That's actually a, a really good analogy. Yeah, like I don't think that's a bad movie per se, but like it does not deserve the attention that it gets. Let's actually, let's jump right to our... We might as well, we're in it. Yeah. Let's do our conclusions, I guess, right? All right. Um, let's see. You made me go first. Uh, since it's my band, you get to go first. Yeah, I do. Just to be fair, let's actually do... Uh, the two albums, Helpless Romantic and okay. How I Spent My Summer Vacation. Okay. And then just kind of a uh, descriptor of like where you think Bouncing Souls fit on like you need to hear, don't need to hear, completely right. skippable. And then I want to I want to touch on um, Lean on Sheena too. We'll talk about that after our, our, okay. our thing because that, that song almost stands on its own. It does. Okay. So it, it, if I had a re- rate, because we're just going to break it down to its simplest form. If I'm yep, just out of five, which right. is a brutal system. There's not a lot of leeway. It's not a lot of leeway. We can't use zero, right? <laughs> no, there's okay. no zero. Okay. So I'm going to give Hopeless Romantic two stars. Oh. And um, okay. that's just me being nice. If I could have given it zero stars, I would have. And I, the only reason- Wait, you skip one? Yeah, because like I need to give one to the next album just to show like I hate oh, that album Jesus. even more. You know what I mean? Okay. So how about you can do half, half? Oh, we can do half. And then both of them get a half star totaling one star. Really? You didn't like- Okay. No, like I honestly, like I did not, I, it's just not, it's not for me. And like, it's also too, like it doesn't, doesn't really age well, like at all. But like, there's just like, if, if, if the music isn't passionate, I cannot get into it. I can't get into it. If it's, if it has soul to it, it can even be bad. And like, this kind of just made you feel nothing. It kind of goes back to, uh, yeah, because then like my anger gets focused on that versus like, me not liking, you know what I mean? Like it gets, it gets, just gets all pushed into like me having to listen to this and like, just like, okay, like you have no conviction. Like, ugh. where would you place them in like the pantheon of, of punk rock? Like, I mean, they're, they're an old G band. So like you have to give them cred for it. But like, I would put it into like, you know, like when before basketball started getting like good basketball players that were tall. Yeah. And like in the 1950s, like a five foot six guy that used to pack boxes for a living could also play on like the team from Wisconsin. Right. They had summer jobs still. Yes. That's what I would put it into. Like it's before the actual thing was developed out. I just think it's a, it's a, it's a grouping of the time, the area, perfect place, perfect time. But like, it's not a band right now that if they came out and they were doing this, like this wouldn't go anywhere. I don't know. All right. I feel like a bummer. No, know? it's okay. Hey, you, you have to be honest. Oh uh, yeah. Of course I have to be honest on this one, but yeah, no, it's just like, and it's so weird too, because like they're coming out of the, the time where it was like, everything was legit. Like nothing was fake. There wasn't like posers. You know what I mean? Like they're legitimately punk. The fact that they lack convention to convict conviction to me. Conviction. I get what you mean. Like they don't have it's like offensive. They don't have anything of like, like they're, 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 they're the type of guys that like won't fight you. Like, even if, like, you say something horrendous or, like, you, like, really go at them, they, like, they're not a guy who, like, they're on a fist fight. It's not even that. Like, if... Is it the lack of messaging? Like, they don't yeah, really... Yeah, like, I mean, like, they're just, like, it's just, like, honestly, it's, like, somebody opened a diary from, like, fifth grade, and it's just, like, they had, like, that's their entire message. <laughs> it's, like, what, what would a fifth grader... And it's not, like, in a blink way where it's, like, 45-year-old guys writing about high school worries. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like... Hey man, like I get what you're saying. Them being from. real almost feels fake to me. I don't know if it comes through in your voice that the listeners can hear. You have this thing of like, I'm trying so, like, you wanted to like them because, like, they give you, like, there's nothing, like, specific to hold against them. Yeah, like, it's not, there's no reason for me not to like them. Would any of, uh, minus Lean on China, would any of these songs that I, I sent you away, would they go on a playlist for you? Nah, never. Okay. Never. There would be a playlist. It would be, like, songs that annoy the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Bouncing Souls for you. Like, what, what are they to you? What's your conclusion and what is your thoughts? Let's start with Hopeless Romantic. What's your Hopeless rating? Hopeless Romantic, it's, it's an album that I, because my, my journey through like listening to them this week, because we go so deep when we prep for these episodes. Yeah, like, we get a little too deep. <laughs> no, honestly, like, I haven't listened to any other podcasts. I haven't listened to any yeah. music besides The Bouncing Soul for like a couple days in a row. Yeah, I think that's why I'm grouchy too. Yeah, because like, like you almost felt like a... And I also like it's not a band you wanted to listen to. Well, no, that like I just wanted to like them, and I just couldn't do it. 
That's fair. All right. And my, but like to me, I had a different journey of it. Of the Bouncing Souls, like I said, they were a band that I was always like, oh yeah, I like them. Like they're fun. They had those couple songs that I knew that I liked. I've never like sat down and like, all right, let's listen to their discography and really think about them. Yeah. My first thought was they're very consistent. You have to give them that. Like they are. You can pick up any Bouncing Soul song and you know it's a Bouncing Soul song. They have they have a very unique and set sound. Yeah, they are very consistent. I can agree with that. But as I went on, I kept listening to album after album. Mm-hmm. That consistency almost turns a little bit into redundancy. There's no challenge. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like I kind of like the I do like bands that are consistent. I don't like when a band is like one album is this and the next one's totally different. I, yeah. I like a, I like a progression, not a total makeover. Yeah, because it's an art. But this band never. It's a self expression. Yeah. Like what like it's not performance art. Like you're not like literally you're not like what would a fifth grader do with this topic? Like that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing too is like I uh, a lot of their albums like you could make a mix li- uh mixtape and you could pick stuff from like their last two albums and like their yeah. fourth and fifth album and it all could be on the same album. But again, coming back to what I was saying too and this is kind of backing you up is once I got over it, the analyzation and like I was cleaning my apartment and I had the headphones on I was bopping and rocking, man. No, it's it's really great if you don't think about it too much. It's so and weird. That's kind of the message of the Bouncing Souls of like they don't think too much. Oh my god, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> They're kind of genius in that way of like it's. That's it's, like some Confucius motherfucking shit you just did. <laughs> did you plan that? No, but we do a lot of work and planning, and we've been talking a lot. And he just dropped that on me. I almost think like he was waiting for his like opportunity. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I fucking hate you. Do you want to adjust your ratings at all? Like I'd still, if I could give them zero stars, I would. <laughs> Cause I care about shit. So if I'm going to put time into it, like I care about it. You are an overthinking guy. And these are definitely not songs that are overthought. No, but I mean, that sums them up. They're just, they don't, there's they don't. almost an envy though. I think of that in you a little bit of like, like this kind of like not being up at night overthinking like every conversation they had that day. Oh my God. I would kill for that. Um, but here's where I'm going to land on it. I give hopeless romantic. I'm going to give that three. Cause it's a very middle, Okay, that's a fair rating from you. Like they're not it's not a five like a five out of five of like holy shit, this fucking blows the doors off. Right. Uh how I spent uh how I spent my summer vacation, I'm gonna give that a three and a half. Okay, so a little bit better. It is a little better, it's a little more consistent. It also has true believers on it, which you like you just can't argue is a great song. That of besides Lean on Sheila, that's the other only song that I like from them that's like I, I do like like. I also I do like songs like Olay and Here We Go where it's literally like it, it's it's a just like ramp up energy song yeah but like i could also see olay like anytime the world cup's happening and, oh yeah and soccer's boring too so like that's like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's almost fitting like it's a soccer chant so um and as far as bouncing souls where i think they fit into the scheme of everything they are it's the reason i think they like they stuck out to me so much from that video game i heard them in they're like if you hear one song or a couple songs they all there's a dog playing with a bone on the floor. It's and Bronx. We're at just, the point where we just let him in. You're going to just have to deal with it because he's too cute. And I, kinda, I think it's cool. I do too. And also, I can't see the listeners, but I can see this cute dog. Who am I going to be mad at? No, I think that everybody's going to love Bronx. He'll be good, become a good character. <laughs> he does not give a fuck, though. No, not at all. He's trying to bite a screwdriver right now. <laughs> so um, overall, though, like, what's your conclusion on the Bouncing Souls and like where they fall into I, I put them in a place of they're good in doses. It's They're kind of like cotton candy, okay. where like if you only have a couple bites, you really do taste the individual flavors. But if you eat a whole bag, by the end of it, you just taste the sugar. Yeah, that's actually really fair. So yeah, I like they're a very three-star band for me. Like As far as punk goes, I, I have a lot of respect for them. I think they're... Their live show from everything I've heard and everyone I've ever met that's seen them says they're amazing. Yeah, no, they're, they're, I remember that. And I'm hoping to see them this summer because they're touring with, uh, Rancid and Dropkick Murphy. So if they're coming oh near you, God. you should see them because I believe they're show. opening. And like, if they're going to do that first, like, 20 minute or hours, but they're just going to fucking blow the doors well, like, off. I like don't want to go to that show anymore now after all the shit I talk. <laughs> that crowd will beat the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> well, I think everyone will know that you're coming from a place of like, it's just not what you want to drink. Yeah, you know? like, I'm not in on the joke, I guess is kind of what it is. You know, it's not a joke. Like, I'm not in on the bit. Yeah, and it's, it's not your, it's not your taste at all like it's almost like you're lactose intolerant in their ice cream no that's really that's that's pretty perfect and like so, you keep trying to make me eat ice cream telling me <laughs> that but I'm it's just, so good you're just not eating the right flavor um so let's go into our last segment we wanted to talk about the part of bouncing souls that john and i both agree on and we do think is a would you say it is a five out of five song no 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 no, no. four three 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 stars Oof. and this is why um when i w- i was listening to a lot of bouncing souls and the song came into the shuffle and i made a note and I just wrote like, thank God for this fucking song. Still three out of five? Three out of, three five. Out of five. And it's really, it's really, to anybody out there that's in a band, um, even if you are horrible at writing, if you write 
500 songs, you're eventually going to write one accidentally. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. I give, I give Lean on Sheen a five out of five. What do you like about, like, what was the, that really set this one apart? Um, authenticity. Um, whatever was happening at that moment actually sounded like there was like, like feeling behind the song. Yeah. It was an artist. And that's to me, art and creativity is very personal. It's very yeah, personal. Fair. It's not something that, that can be manufactured and it's not something that should be taken lightly. And it's not something that should just be put out there as like, oh, it's, well, it's not a job. You don't clock in and clock out. Okay. People that clock in and clock out to a factory hate their life. You don't do that with art and music. And to me, like, that's just kind of what it came down to. It's like that same blue collar thing that always worked for them and made them what they are to me is also like their biggest downfall. But when you hear Lena and Sheila, it actually sounds like, like Sheena. Sheena. Sorry. That, what, what are we up to now? Four Aaron, two John? I fucking hate this guy. This is a note I was given about some feedback about the shows that we should actually literally keep track. Keep it. But like, I, I don't even think I have two. You threw me one and the other one I did rejected. So you have four. I have none still. No, you have at least one. Okay, well, give me one. Let's actually make this official, which is funny because we recorded our first couple episodes out of order. Yeah, so, so like this is all over the place. So we'll let you know when we actually record and we're actually in like yeah. order, but... So far right now, it's Aaron Four, John One. Yeah. And John's trying. <laughs> and he's trying so hard, guys. This guy's sitting so pretty on top of his mountain right now, looking down at me. <laughs> so this is all John's What, what are your thoughts on bad. Machine, I think it's a great song. I think it, you're right. It has emotional resonance to it. Yeah. It actually has a story. Mm-hmm. It has a character in it. Yeah. Um, and it has a high point and a low point. It has a climax to it. Yeah. Um, where a lot of the other Bouncing Soul song are... Bouncing Souls songs. Yeah. That's hard to say. It is. Um, by the way, I haven't messed up any titles yet this episode. You have. I just didn't point them out. Oh, see, that's why you don't have any points. <laughs> see, that's what I should have done. That's a point. You've done it like twice now. Um, you'll know. He does the editing, so he'll know what I'm saying. And, well, I only leave it in when it's wrong if you point it out. That's the other thing. He does the editing, so it helps with the points a lot more. Oh, fuck you. Because like you're probably only going to hear in this episode that he has four. In reality, I have eight points. It's eight to one, John, but Aaron is always going to edit it, so he has more points. I've never edited out giving a point. Okay, blink twice if that's true. See, no one's going to ever know. It's a podcast. Okay. <laughs> I'm, so, only, I'm only cutting it up because I actually don't do that. <laughs> Because I actually, like, I honor oh, the point system. You and your truthfulness. And I've told so you before, annoying. I try to edit these editors to make you look like you're so much nicer to me than you are. It's, it's the only reason I wanted to bring up, like, the specific about it. One, because I'm trying to save you, like, a million tweets that you got it wrong. That's a big part of it. Bring them. <laughs> the I, other part is she I don't is, run from your tweets. I welcome them. John will like every mean thing you tweet at him. <laughs> JFK speaker. Yeah. I don't walk. I don't run from your tweets. I welcome them. You can find John on Twitter at, at John underscore Brian. If you want to just say mean things to That's him, he will B-R-I-A-N. like them. That's B-R-I-A-N. It's like brain, but the A and the I are switched. Will you actually, if people actually like hashtag yeah. uh, PPS and then like whatever they say to you, you will like it no matter what it says? Yeah, I'll like it no matter what it says. Okay. Uh, same here. Yeah. Uh, I, I will also respond to you if you, at Aaron M. Haig. Yeah, we both just want somebody to talk to. Um, so Lean on Sheena, it's a great song. I think that's the one we'll go out on tonight. Okay. Um, let's do recommendations. Okay, cool. Uh, is there a band, song, movie? Yes. Uh, musical? Yeah. I uh, actually, type of t-shirt? I want to recommend a, a Flavor band. of tea? And like, I, I always feel stupid during this part. And just the reason why is because, like, you know, like, we're not, like, discovering anything here. No, no, it's totally, it's, it's it's whatever you're listening to lately. And also, a lot of times, you and I are recommending things that, like, I've never heard. And okay, I, cool. I always listen to your recommendations. So, the reason why I actually picked this band was because we did a lot of listening to Bouncing Souls. So, um, the band that I'm going to recommend here is going to be a band called Set Your Goals. And they are a punk rock slash melodic hardcore band from the Bay Area of San Francisco. And the album I'm going to recommend is called Mutiny. And Mutiny. Um, this was a time when MySpace was very, very popular. There was a lot of MySpace bands coming out. Everything was really overproduced and like pre-manufactured. Jeffree Star had somehow infiltrated our scene and was now a person that was actually touring with bands that we all would play with and open up with. I had to open for Jeffree Star a couple times. Who? Jeffree Star. He was the 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 guy that would dress like a girl and wear makeup and was really catty on MySpace. Davey Havoc? <laughs> well, that, hey, if I find they all don't kill me. They're all doing that. But I mean, he was basically he was an online personality that was a drag queen, and okay, he got okay. super super big, and they wanted to monotonize it, so he started putting out music. 
and he started toying with like emo and punk bands. As a band or just as himself? Just as himself. And he would just come out and just shit all over fucking music. And we would open for him whenever he played Jacksonville. Him and like, there was another band called like The Millionaires. They're on MySpace. It was like three rapping girls that would just rap about like doing I've never drugs. never heard of any of these people. Yeah, this is like, this is a weird spot. The only reason like I know that is the dark side of like, MySpace. Yeah, we had to like deal with some of this shit. But um, this band came out in 2006 with this album and it was groundbreaking. It's one of those albums where, have you, ever, have you ever seen a band where they come out with an album and then they get bigger than the tour position that they were given? So like, mm-hmm. like a warp tour band it happens and all of a sudden like the little stage you're on people start getting hurt because so many kids are rushing it yeah. you have to move them to the main stage you didn't plan it so this album blew up and the reason why it was so amazing is because it's so underproduced like they go out of key in certain parts <laughs> of singing like it doesn't doesn't work and it's sloppy and it's not too like a perfect click and it's so fucking good so authentic so real it's so authentic and it's got an actual message behind it as well some of the songs are a little hokey with the message there's some where you listen to it like they have one about organized crime like organized crime comes in more forms than one and your form is no exception and you're like okay guys let's let's chill out a little bit but they're this coming is their with conviction. first album uh no 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 they had an ep before this this was like their first like full length that really okay, really but did. it's their first album album yeah you should okay. listen to it well that's it's, forgivable you, for songs like that you will love this album this album is so fucking good. I'll check it out. You know me. I'll listen to anything. Six out once. of five, with five being the highest stars, is what I give it. Ooh, you can't rate something we haven't actually done a show on, uh, John. I can't wait to do that. That's all I got to say, motherfuckers. And I'll try to find a way to get you to lower that rating. <laughs> I, uh, what do you got, Aaron? I, uh, between this show and everything else, I haven't listened to really any music like this I know, week. right? <laughs> so I recommend everybody should watch Ninja Warrior on NBC. <laughs> Because it's amazing. It is my favorite sport. Uh, Jesse Graff is an American hero. Flip Rodriguez is an American hero. I can name more. I know these names. I've, I watched all of the last season in like three days with my wife. So yeah, it's coming back like in June 9th or something. So the new season. So if you want to tweet at me about American Ninja Warrior, I will talk about it because it's fucking amazing. And it's my favorite sport. These are superhumans. They can, they can do things people can't do. And uh, I bought weights today just because I'm like, maybe oh one day God. I could be a ninja. So American Ninja Warrior on NBC. I would love to see you do any type of Ninja Warrior shit. They do a press thing where like they let people run the course. Have you ever seen the video of the ki- the guy that has his like kid do the, the Ninja Warrior course, like the two-year-old kid? Okay. That's what it reminds me of you doing the, the Ninja Warrior. <laughs> oh, I am. Um, as anyone who has seen pictures of me online or watched my stand-up videos, you can tell uh, I have the body shape of a toddler that got like the ooze from uh, Ninja <laughs> Turtles 2. Like, I didn't change proportions. I'm just taller. That's awesome. The, um, the other thing, too, I really respect with Ninja Warrior is like, there's like video games you can play on your iPhone. I'm so bad at video games that I can't even do like the obstacles. He is terrible at video games. I can't even do the obstacles on my phone with the, the, the guy on the game that can do them. <laughs> and so like when people can do that in real life, I'm just like, holy fucking It's insane. Shit. I just watched the All-Stars from last season yeah. and they do this uh, skills competition. Yeah. Where um, they just see like just very specific obstacles like how high or how far or how fast they can go on stuff. Yeah. One of them is uh, basically a window ledge where they jump up onto something and the ledge is only about two inches deep to hold on to. Oh, my God. And then they see how far they can jump to another one. And the record before from last season was uh, was 14 feet, like through the air, oh, the 14 fuck? feet away. This year, Drew Dreschel uh, did 15. Dude, that's insane. It's fucking... No, I'm going to show you... After this, I'm going to make John watch Jesse Graff's uh, qualifying run in Los Angeles from last year. She Like, she is my fucking hero. Like, she is a badass. Um, And then the other thing, like, I wanted to bring up just before we close out... Sure. ...was um, part of the the reckoning that I had when it came to the Bouncing Souls Uh was... um, kind of like looking more into it. And so there's a, there's a interview on YouTube. That oh, I think right. Everybody should check out if they want to. Um, I will give you the, uh, the link and our, our everything. Basically though, it's like one of the top interviews that comes up, but it's bouncing souls interview. Greg talks aliens, their 10th record Ramones and more. Okay. And um, it's really good, but it kind of like just we'll link that too. Yeah. And it just kind of like brings it all around the circle with how you should look at the bouncing souls. And it kind of just puts everything into perspective. And I think if I would have had more of that mindset going into it, that I could have found it like the same way you got me to my Zen moment a couple yeah. minutes ago. How you're taking them more seriously than they yeah, take themselves. Yeah, I, I was way doing it over thing, and I became the jukebox bully, basically, that I didn't want to become. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, that song's about me, totally. <laughs> All right, man, this was a pleasure. Thank you for uh, making me listen to this, Ben. Yeah, and now you never have to again. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to do a second Bouncing Souls episode. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for listening this week. My name is Aaron Haig. And I'm John Bryan. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. All right, so we just got to do the music credits here really quick. And then also I have a little bonus for you guys too here at the end of this episode. 
So this week we actually stayed pretty on topic. All the music drops are actually from The Bouncing Souls. So in order we got I Like Your Mom, which is off of The Good, The Bad, and The Argyle. We have The BMX Song, which is off of Maniacal Laughter. Then You're So Rad and Bullying the Jukebox, which are both off of Hopeless Romantic. Uh, then we played Never Say Die slash When You're Young, which is off of uh, Ghosts on the Boardwalk. And we didn't actually play this next song, but we talked about it a lot. It's called Lean on Sheena. That's off of the gold record. All right, and now on to the little bonus here. We talked a lot this week about the Bouncing Souls and how they're out of New Jersey. There's another band. They're an up-and-coming local band out of New Jersey that's really good. I kind of stumbled across them, and I really wanted to share them with you, so I reached out, and I got permission to play one of their songs here. They're called The Ones You Forgot. Uh, You can follow them on Twitter at T-O-Y-F Music. Uh, They're really good. So the song that we're going to play here is called Make It Out Alive. Just a little overview. It's a really good pop-punk song. It has an amazing lead guitar part. It's very tight. They all play well together. So they're out of Brick, New Jersey. Let's go out on this last song here. It's called Make It Out Alive. <laughs> 